Hello class, let's talk about Athenian society in the time of the Sophists and Socrates. So first we shall begin with an introduction, then we'll talk about the polis of Athens, Athenian culture, and end with a conclusion. So for the teachings of the Sophists and Socrates to make sense, we must first have some basic understanding of the society in which they lived. For starters, the Sophists and Socrates taught in and around the ancient Greek city of Athens. And in case you're curious where Athens is, take a look at the red arrow pointing to the city of Athens, uh, kind of on the eastern side of the Greek peninsula. Now Athens, like other ancient Greek civilizations, was a polis or city-state. And a polis is a small independent society with a central urban area. So here's an artist's rendition of the polis of Athens. So as you can see, it's a city which is surrounded by a defensive wall with a port and has some rural areas around it. So basically the rural areas would provide the food and the walls, the defense. And in the city itself, you would have commerce, you'd have a marketplace, the government system, temples, things of that nature. So basically Athens was kind of like a tiny country with an active urban center. And in ancient Greek civilization, each polis had its own unique culture, government structure, as well as an active military. So for example, Athens had a very different culture and political system from, let's say, the Greek polis, Sparta. So what was Athenian culture like in the fifth century BCE during the time of the Sophists and Socrates? So basically it was a time of great prosperity. Athens won an overwhelming victory over the Persians in the Greco-Persian War. The statesmen Salon and Pericles created the first Athenian de democratic system of government. And economic prosperity resulted in great advancement in, in the arts, architecture, literature, and philosophy. So what was the result of all of this prosperity? an Athenian attitude of ethnocentrism or cultural superiority. That is, according to Socio, Athenians had this attitude that they had the greatest government, the greatest army, the greatest culture, and were comprised of the greatest human beings to walk the earth. So Athens was a virtuous or excellent society. And since Athenian society was considered virtuous, Young men strive to become virtuous citizens, to become great citizens in this great polis of Athens. A young man, however, was virtuous only if society viewed him as virtuous. That is, there existed a greater standard of excellence in which young men were expected to measure up. So if you were an athlete in ancient Athenian society, like a wrestler, you could think that you like reach like your personal best, that you're in your peak condition, that you are the best wrestler out there. But unless your peers, right, the rest of society thinks you're excellent, you're not excellent. Same thing with the arts. You know, you could think that you are like the best musician in all of Athens, but unless other people say so, you are not the most virtuous musician in the city. And same thing with being a soldier. You could think that you're the most courageous, the strongest with great leadership skills, but again, unless the greater society acknowledges that, you're not. So in Athenian society, there was no such thing as a personal best. In order to be considered virtuous, you need to be viewed by your peers as such. Virtuous qualities were therefore socially determined. And if someone did not measure up to society standard, he was not considered virtuous. So in conclusion, as Athenians, the Sophists and Socrates were concerned with the following question. What is virtue and how is it attained? And they're asking this question because they're living in a society which is basically obsessed over this question. And passionate disagreements between the Sophists and Socrates regarding this question resulted in epic intellectual clashes in the marketplaces and gardens of Athens. 
much of which were captured in Plato's dialogues.